Salt, the bedrock of modern civilization and a key resource that not only shaped our nation, but remains as vital to its very existence as ever. But getting this all important mineral out of the earth and into our lives is no small feat. It demands long hours, constant supervision, uh, and the tenacity needed to work in one of America's harshest environments. Yeah, there we go, we, uh, we're good now. For the past 8,000 years or so, salt has been one of society's greatest assets, not just because our bodies require it to live, but because its unique qualities are essential to creating a lot of pretty handy products, like glass, meat, rubber, textiles, and about half of all the chemicals we use. That's why every year, the United States will produce about 42 million tons of it or enough to fill a string of rail cars stretching from the tip of Florida across Canada to northernmost Alaska. And while a good bit of that will wind up on tables across the country, the bulk of it by far serves another purpose, one that may well have saved your life by now, de-icing roads. This simple practice actually reduces winter car accidents by 50%, many of which could be deadly. And for America's more northern states, Winter has already arrived. Many parts of the country are in the grip of a brutal cold front. What we know now is it's a monster. What we don't know is how much snow it will leave in its wake. Almost overnight, thousands of miles of roadways are in desperate need of salt, which means the demand for this precious mineral is spiking in a big way. Fortunately for us, the 60 plus salt producers of our nation are working overtime to fill that demand, including a facility in southern New Mexico known as United Salt Carlsbad. Here, a team of 75 workers can shovel, process, and ship off a thousand tons of salt per day. But with that and more now needed in the north, they're aiming to double their output to a near uncanny 2,000 tons. And all that starts with workers like this man, Raul Flores. We're gonna make our way out to the Salt Lake. We're gonna do some ripping out with this powerful machine here. There are a number of ways to harvest salt, from mining to laying brine out to dry. But here in Carlsbad, guys like Raul harvest it from a 2,000 acre flat, and a pretty old one at that. Naturally occurring salt pans like this one were once prehistoric lakes. But over the course of about two million years, the arid climate evaporated it down to a sheet of almost pure sodium chloride, which can be scraped directly from the Earth's surface. But first, it has to be broken up. What I am doing uh, right now is using my ripper, sump a ripper in, we'll uh, just move forward here and make sure we got enough sump. It looks pretty good. It looks like we're getting a fair amount of salt. Just gonna keep on doing this. In all, Raul will make 32 passes with the ripper to loosen up a 100-foot strip of raw salt. Then, it's time for phase two. I just finished uh, my last pass here, so we're fixing to uh, start pushing up. We'll start the, the wind roll right here. We'll push some piles up. As we go along here, uh, that'll create our wind rows. A windrow is basically just a 100-foot-long pile of salt, which Raul will draw from to fill trucks bound for the production plant. Uh, we're doing good so far. We're going into uh, finish this third pass, and we'll move on to the next pass. But on salt beds like these, uh-oh, uh-oh. Some areas, often called holes, can be like quicksand. Looks like our front tires are stuck. We'll have to call somebody to get me out.
Whether it's scraped from lake beds, or chiseled from underground tunnels, or distilled from brine, about 18 million tons of salt will be used on icy roads across the country each winter. And with the early cold front sweeping the north, guys like Riley Smith are feeling the pressure as much as anyone at the Carlsbad facility. The dependence on road salt to be able to help create safer driving conditions for everyone is pretty essential. So I got to make sure that you know, not only is everything running smoothly, that everyone's safe while doing it, and we're getting the product that we need to give to all our customers. As foreman of United Salt's Lake Plant, it's Riley's job to ensure that the American public receives the salt that's been harvested, and none of the impurities that come with it. Which means today, you'll need to wash 2,000 tons of salt to meet the spike in demand. And all that starts with firing up the facility's water pumps. So right now we're on our way to start the first pump up for the wash plant. We're going to get it going. So we're going to turn on the master switch, a bypass, and a start. Now we're going to activate the clutch, put it first gear. And we have to let the pressure build up. So we're bringing water in from the lake using the pump and we're sucking it up, letting the pressure come into this valve. What we're looking for is the pressure to hit around 20 PSI so it'll take over and go to the wash plant. Natural brine from the lake is salty enough to rinse United's product without dissolving it. And with plenty of that now feeding into the washing facility, Riley's ready to fire up the rest of the system. First thing we're gonna do is start the stacking belt. So now we're, we're gonna look for our stacking belt, make sure it's moving. Now that we see it's moving, we're gonna start our flat belt. We're gonna turn it on, make sure it's running. We see it moving up there. Now that we got everything going, we're gonna go start feeding it. Each seven ton bucket of salt will keep the washing plant busy for a good two minutes, giving Riley just enough time to talk us through the process. We were up there pushing salt onto the grate, which goes to the crusher, which gets fed onto this belt, and then it comes all the way across the belt into this tank to be washed. But while giving the grand tour, Riley's failed to notice an issue in the works. Tank's overflowing, so we're gonna take care of that. There are a lot of things that can go wrong in a typical day of salt production mainly because it's such an unforgiving material to work with, especially when it comes to the machinery that's meant to move it. That's why United counts on guys like maintenance manager Vince Goki to keep all that equipment running as it should. And today, that means making a critical repair to one of the company's nine loaders. We're gonna be resealing the lift cylinder on our 972 loader. Install new seals on a cylinder that's leaking. We'll get it back up, get it back to production so they can uh, keep running out here. Leaky cylinders are just one of the many salt-induced issues that Vince deals with on a daily basis. And with more product to move than usual today, fixing this loader is priority one. We'll get it set up, get the bucket on the support rack, start getting everything ready to pull the cylinder out. There you go. Down a little on the front. The reason we're changing this out is the packing here is leaking. We'll put uh, new seals in it and uh, get it up to where it quits leaking. For starters, Vince and his team will have to remove the eight bolts holding the piston in place. But in an environment where salt conspires to seize everything in rust, just doing that can be a challenge. Yeah. Well, go ahead and try it. Ready? Yeah. It broke. While Vince and his team work on the stubborn bolts, 10 miles up the road at United Salt's main processing plant, operator Kelly Smith is firing up yet another system, one designed to dry, sort, and store the freshly cleaned salt. So now that we can turn on the dryer. A propane dryer like this one can process about 60 tons of salt per hour, 
before sending it off for sifting and storage. But first, it'll need to be fired up. So now that the fire's going, we can walk through and check, make sure everything's running good. The larger in scale, this dryer works a lot like your typical household appliance with a rotating cylinder tossing the salt to ensure it's evenly heated. So after the salt comes through the dryer, it'll fall into through the screen and into the hot screw. So the hot screw will take the salt and it'll take it up to the production elevator and then, oh, shit. So it's all dumping out the side instead of going up through the bins. 